do. Yeah, I was forgetting to update, so now I'm doing it. But this is a To All The Boys vlog, obviously. I, I'm almost... I'm almost done with this book, y'all. Like, I will be done very soon. I'm on page 191. For those of you who don't know what this story is about, this book follows LJ, who is Laura Jean Song Covey. That's her full name. And she has these five letters that she wrote to all the boys that she's had crushes on in her whole life. And she writes these letters because she feels like her love is just so strong that if she doesn't write them out on paper, that she will just lose control. So she writes her love letters, and then she actually does address them. She has no intentions of ever, ever mailing these letters out. However, someone in her household gets a hold of this box and mails her letters to all these guys and they all get letters and one of the guys who gets her letter is her sister's ex-boyfriend Josh who is her neighbor who's the first boy that she thinks she ever loved and so to make Josh think that she doesn't like him anymore she ends up fake dating Peter Kavinsky who's also another recipient of one of her love letters so anyway that's the gist of the story many of you know this because you've came to live shows or you've just seen me tweet about it maybe or I don't know but I read these books this trilogy when they first came out back in 2014 so a while ago and I love this trilogy so much because I felt like at the time I was 18 you know so I was the same age almost as Laura Jean and yeah we, it was just a fun ride and I loved romance at the time I loved why romance at the time why romances were everything to me at 18 years old you know 17 years old reading it now as an adult is so different like I don't know how I remember how I felt when I read this and I think I might feel a little differently now that I'm 24 uh, because some of the things in this book are very like not cringy or anything like that but I can see why 18 year old me loved this series a lot I still love it of course but I can I don't I'm not having the same emotional reaction to it. I definitely feel like I'm analyzing this book a lot more than I did when I was a teenager, uh, which I guess is bound to happen when you do read books later on in your life that you read when you're younger. But let's just start with like the main characters, LJ, AKA Laura Jean, Peter Kavinsky, Josh, Chris, Genevieve. LJ's character, she's one of those I'm not like other girl characters for sure. And at the time when I read this series, I didn't know that was even like a thing. This theme of innocence with LJ is something that I'm noticing a lot so far while reading. And it's rubbing me in different ways because it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I feel like it's almost like it's saying if you're not like LJ, you're not an innocent person or you're not a good girl. Because she blatantly says in this book that she's a good girl, that her and her sisters are good girls. She hasn't had a boyfriend and they don't smoke. Like, so it's like, <laughs> in my mind when I read that, I was just like, so LJ, are people who do these things, are they like not good girls? Like, are they not good people? <laughs> But no, honestly though, it's something that I just was like, I didn't vibe with so much. This is a reread to prepare for the third movie coming out in approximately five days. I'm really excited for this. So yeah, Laura Jean is obviously that girl and she's the quirky one, you know, the innocent one all that good stuff. I do love LJ. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate between the movie and the books when it comes to characters because I love Lana. I think she's a great actress and I love her as Laura Jean. I love Peter for his humor. He was very down to earth in the books. Um, he was definitely a 17 year old boy in the sense that 17 year olds in general actually don't always know what they want to do with their life and they do feel the pressures of graduating soon and having to have everything put together before they graduate. And Peter definitely is a great person in the book that showcases how kids at that, that age definitely struggle with making these very grown-up decisions and even grown-ups like me have struggled with making these big life decisions so there's no age limit on who can make decisions like that and make a good decision but he when he cares he cares very deeply and that's one thing that I love about him is that even though people have these preconceived notions about who he is they don't know who he is you know I like that in a character that the ones who are kind of misjudged but then the main character gets to know them and it's like whoa there's more to them than what I thought I knew. I think that so many of us deal with that. I do know what it's like to be misjudged and for people to think they know about you or know you and know things about you when they really don't. I love Chris's character. I feel like she again was very raw, very open. There's nothing wrong with being someone who's inexperienced in certain areas in life at that age or any age. There's nothing wrong with being just being kind of closed off until you're ready to be open with someone. Nothing wrong with that at all. I was the opposite. I was always very open with people. I never had a problem with getting to know people and I'm very extroverted so I never felt the way Laura Jean did and so though I couldn't relate to her I know other people other people can. Kitty, Margot, and LJ their whole dynamic is my favorite thing about these books because they're really close first of all which I can relate to. I was very close to my siblings growing up like Kitty and Margot and LJ. I too used to lay in bed with my sister sleep in there with her sometimes 
games and just hang out with her all the time. I always wanted to be with her. And we're six years apart. She's older than I am. So I know what it's like to be kind of like a kitty and to be close to my older siblings. So I like that we get to see her, her dad. We learn about her mom. We get to, you know, learn about her sisters and their relationships and how it kind of shapes the decision that even Laura Jean makes later on in her life. So this whole thing with Josh. Josh is very boring. Um, I've always felt like Josh was boring in the movies and the books. Josh always felt like a gnat or like a fly, just always bothering you, like always there. And I couldn't stand it. You know, of course, I, I feel for him. He got broken up with in this book. So I do feel for him in that aspect. And Josh was definitely very like on this little high horse, like, excuse me, sir, go back to your house and relax, <laughs> you know what I mean? I have a fun activity for you guys to see me do tomorrow or like the next day, whenever I finish this book, which should be soon. I actually bought all the ingredients to make Josh's favorite cookies, because <laughs> you guys know Laura Jean loves to bake and I like baking because it's fun. Like I don't do it often, but I, I do like to do it because it's a good time, because I usually have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Which is the fun part. And I get to do a taste test to see if Laura G knows what she's doing in the kitchen. Life was great till you added colors. I feel like when I first read this book, there were so many things that I didn't pay, pay attention to because I was reading it as a 17, 18 year old girl and I was just here for the romance. It was a good time. I've discussed this book with friends, with uh, other subscribers, with people just on Twitter and stuff. And everyone definitely has different opinions, which is great. I noticed that a lot of people don't like the voice of the book because it does sound very young and it's going to. Laura Jean is very, um, she's very inexperienced and that's totally fine. Not everyone at 17 or 18 is that, is that experienced with um, relationships or love or sex or whatever. Everyone has different life experiences. This is just one that we don't see often I feel like in YA um, where I think that a lot of us have consumed so many YA romances where the kids in these books act older or they sound older. Um, whereas when you read a book like this, it's very polarizing because Laura Jean doesn't sound like many of the girls that I've read about in other YA romances before. So her sister was very protective of her and whereas when her sister moved away and went off to college, Laura Jean had to step up and become a little bit older. And you get to see that with her driving. This is one thing I want to talk about because I feel like it's a simple thing again that you just don't see in YA or if it is in YA books, it's just like, oh yeah, I got in my car and I drove away. This book heavily discusses Laura Jean's panic and her fear with driving. When it comes to driving a car um, and getting your license at 16 or 17, I understand how daunting that feels. When I got my license, I was 16, but I took driver's ed when I was 15, so I was driving pretty young. And I remember very vividly driving a car for driver's ed and I was terrified. Like, I was very scared. Um, I never had a fear of cars or a fear of getting behind the wheel, but when I got behind the wheel and driving a car is not, it's no small feat, you know, it's a big deal. And Laura Jean expresses her fear of driving a lot in this book. I think the this whole fear of driving kind of goes back to a lot of the fears that she has in general. She's afraid of falling in love. She's afraid of opening up to people because again, she expresses in her, I think in this first book, how she lost her mom and if she gets close to people, it becomes very real for her. And that means that she can lose them someday. So. Laura Jean, so with her character being the way that she is, it's understandable. And at 17 when I read this book, I definitely didn't read it that way, but now I, I definitely do. Now that I'm older, I will say the romance is not like the best. It's enjoyable. It's really nice to read a book like this where the conflict isn't that big of a deal. The conflict isn't that bad or that serious. Um, I much prefer adult romances to YA romance, but when I do need a quick pick me up or just something that's light, books like these are perfect for me. And I'm still baking Josh's cookies, even though I cannot stand Josh. Oh, that's the other thing. He he speaks to her in the same way that Margot does when it's like this like parental figure, like make sure you're doing X, Y, and Z for your college applications, blah, blah, blah. He kind of speaks to her in a very patronizing way and I don't like that. Okay, hi everybody. So I'm tr currently taking my braids out, um, but I'm listening to the audiobook for To All The Boys. And I just got to a part where Josh kisses Laura Jean. I, I actually forgot about this part. When she has a boyfriend, first of all. Second of all, they're just friends and they've been acting weird together anyway. And he just up and kisses her. Like, excuse me. Also, once again, it's like in this whole book, Josh is just so annoying. Josh and Margot are perfect for each other because they're both very judgy. They're both very like, I know what's best for you, Laura Jean. You don't know yourself. You don't know Peter. Peter cheated on a test in seventh grade. So? 
Margot literally made a face when she found out that her sister was dating Peter because he cheated in his, on his test in seventh grade. And because he's douchey, because he's on the lacrosse team. I know they, they mean well, but again, it's one of those things when Laura Jean is not a baby, she's 16 years old. Don't take away her opportunity and her chances to learn lessons from the choices that she makes. I'm having a good time with the book still. I'm almost finished, actually. I think I have, I have an hour left in the book. I believe. Yes, an hour left in the book, so I'm almost finished, so I'll get done soon, and then I need to bake these cookies still. I don't know when I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna have that done soon, so I can hopefully get this video uploaded before the movie comes out. Worst case scenario, I'll have it uploaded when the movie is already out, and I'll just upload it after. Like, I'm not stressing myself out about that. Okay, folks, here we are in the kitchen of Mikasa. In the kitchen of my house, what? That makes sense. Um, I'm on FaceTime with the gals. But they can't hear me. Hold on to me. Hold on a second. Everyone say hi to my vlog. Hi. Nice to see y'all. Okay, bye. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so I'm about to start doing my little. They're still talking and I'm trying to record. There's. They're they're still talking while I'm trying to record my cooking session, my baking session, baking with baking with bounded and bookmark. Oh my gosh, it's so cute! Welcome to baking with bounded and bookmark. In today's video, I'm going to be <laughs> okay. No, but seriously though, I am about to start um, making Josh's favorite white chocolate cranberry cookies. I don't know if they're good, but Laura Jane made them, so so I have all my ingredients. I have my cranberries, my white chocolate. And everything else I freaking need. Show me something. Give me more than one thing. I need more than less than I do. Say you're a good guy. Make me believe it. Don't wanna hear it. I wanna see it. See how. Rewind. When we rewind. It feels so nice. baking with bound and bookmark is not as aesthetically pleasing as I thought it would be, but that's okay. And now we're gonna put it in the oven for about, to, oh, I gotta sprinkle with sea salt. And we wait. That was cookie. <laughs> I hate to brag on myself. No, I don't. <laughs> My friends are making me laugh. Please look at them, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's crispy on the outside, and on the edge, and soft on the inside. It's decadent and delicious. Mm. Tick tock, the clock keeps ticking. I don't know what I should Hi everybody, so I'm, as you can see, really happy right now for two reasons. Number one, I forgot to update you guys about the whole To All The Boys book. I did in fact finish the book, of course I gave it five stars again. Um, many people don't like this story, and that's totally fine. Me, I love it, I love this series. I was complaining so much about like Margo and Josh, and although I cannot stand them in the first book, and they're really annoying, the movie versions of Margo and Josh are not that bad. Uh, but overall, I love the book, of course. I love Peter and I love Laura Jean together. I did not do the whole trilogy, I just read the first book, so just an FYI, um, just to kind of get back into the groove of it and just relive their first story all over again. Um, and it was so sweet, per usual. It's finally time, you guys. I'm finally turning on my TV, and I'm about to watch the last movie. I'm so nervous because I'm gonna be recording as I watch, so I'm gonna like check in with you guys on certain parts because people have said that, why is my TV not turning on? People have said that I'm gonna cry in this movie, so I'm a little bit nervous about that part. 
because I didn't plan on crying at all. Um, but they do graduate at the end, so I'm just like, I'm pretty sure I'll probably drop a few tears. And it's like, it's the end of a legacy for me, so I'm not ready, but I'm still ready, so I'm about to turn it on. Um, I'm really, really excited right now. <laughs> I'm really, really happy for Jenny Han. I feel like I know this is probably a dream come true for her to have a... Um, I know that she's thrilled to have finished her series um, on Netflix, and I know it's a big accomplishment for her, so I'm so happy for Jenny. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's time. Oh. All right, everyone, here we go. I'm pressing play now. We are a go. Okay, first of all, I just watched the first interaction between Laura Jean and... Jen, I, I love it. Now, mind you guys, I haven't read the third book in years. I don't remember them being that friendly in the third book. I do remember that Jen, um, in the second book, her backstory kind of comes to light and Laura Jean's a part of it. And I think they kind of come to an understanding. But I'm loving that. Like, there's nothing better than seeing two girls who are feuding, like who used to be best friends, become friends again. Y'all, I'm literally so happy right now. They're playing I Like Me Better. And it's giving me flashbacks to the first movie that I fell in love with and I just can't believe it. When I tell y'all, the serotonin is at its maximum level right now. <laughs> like, the Stanford truck, Peter and the Stanford truck, adorable, so freaking cute. I'm here for the feelings, I'm here for a good time, I'm here to just watch the last movie of Peter and Laura Jean and their story. Okay, they just got to New York City which is so cool because I've never been to New York. I would love to go to New York someday. Okay, so I just wanna talk about this really, really quickly, like not go too in depth, because I can talk a lot about things. But one of the things that I'm loving about this entire movie already is the fact that you clearly get to see the struggle that a lot of high school couples go through when they're seniors and they're applying to schools. Some that are the same, some that are different. And then something happens and your plans change and it's like, do I make the choice that I feel like my heart wants me to make? Or do I make the choice that I feel like is what my head wants me to make? And I think that sometimes they're not the same choice. And for Laura Jean, you know, she is falling in love with New York. She got into UC Berkeley because it's closer to Stanford, which is where her boyfriend's gonna be going. But if she loves New York, she should go there. And that's what I think. Like, I've always felt that way. And that's not to say it's not a difficult choice because it is. And here's the thing, I think, I think at the age of 17, 18, 16 sometimes even, when it comes to deciding where to go to college, especially if like you're dating someone and you're looking at two different schools, really and truly, if someone comes to you for advice on what to do, we should be giving people the best advice that we can so as not to steer the direction in one way or the other. Because here's the thing, do I think that Laura Jean should go to NYU? or Berkeley. I think that she should go where she feels she will succeed, where she will fit best, and where she'll be happiest. Do I think she should make this choice based on her boyfriend? No. If she feels like they're gonna make it long term, I think it's smart to consider people who are in your life, but you don't make choices around everyone in your life. You consider them and then you make the choice that's best for you in the end. But it's up to her to make the choice. Also, I'm loving that we're seeing more of Lucas and Chris because, oh, excuse me, that whole gang is my favorite. In the first two movies, you really didn't see them that often. We saw more of John and more of Peter and Josh, and we rarely saw Lucas and Chris. And in the books, they're a big part of her life, so I'm glad that they're finally in this movie heavily cut. I love Lucas, I love Chris. Their whole friend dynamic is just so perfect. So, and it's nice to see her dad and Trina. And it, this movie is just so good already. Y'all, I, I freaking love Chrissy and Trevor. Like, they're so funny. And I'm so glad we're seeing more of them in this movie. I, the prom scene. I remember my prom like it was yesterday. I went with my very best friend, Nick, and it was literally everything that I could have wanted. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I'm loving it here. <sighs> wow, okay, bye again. <sighs> Y'all, <laughs> they graduated. I don't know what it is about watching movies where I get to see them kind of grow up and then they graduate and I just get so sad. She's in New York! Peter going to Stanford, oh. <laughs> No Y'all, like, I'm really feeling. But we're not like this. You know, one thing 3,000 miles is good for? Writing love letters. Writing love letters. I knew she was gonna say that. Oh my god. 
really over. You know, of course, people always describe me as like the, the hopeless romantic friend. And you know, I'm always like talking about love because I, I do. I, I've, I've been in love a few times in my life. And so love has always been like a big thing to me, really important and something that I just, I love to experience for myself and everyone else to experience for themselves. So when I read this series for the first time, I loved it. I'm an old soul at heart. Love letters are everything to me. I love letters. So seeing this as a last movie, it's how I felt when High School Musical 3 came out and it was over. I was happy but sad because it's the end of an era for me. Like I know a lot of people, like I said, everyone doesn't love this series and it wasn't like some life-changing thing for everyone. Movies like these, I'm getting emotional. What? Why? <laughs> like why am I getting emotional? Books like these, movies like these, validate the fact that it's perfectly fine to be a romantic like because I feel like people people don't mean anything negative by it or any harm but I you know all my life I've been like jokingly laughed at as being like this romantic person and just kind of like my head's always in the clouds kind of thing and like you can't have fairy tale love and of course I'm not I'm not naive anymore like I know that love doesn't always look like this but it's a thing that love will look how we want it to so I will always believe in the best when it comes to romance and love and seeing movies like these and seeing authors still write about love in this way makes me feel so seen. It's okay, you know, like no matter who you are, if you are somebody who loves love and the idea of love and you, you just, you want that for yourself in your life, if you don't already have it, it's fine because I'm the same way. So I don't know, I just appreciate Jenny Han for writing this story. I'm sad that it's over, but I'm grateful that I have a place to always go back and watch it. So I'm happy if you guys cannot tell. <laughs> This is the end of my vlog. This is a very long one, I'm sure. I don't know how long it's gonna be when I go to edit this, but I do hope that you guys enjoyed my reading vlog. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me bake. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me hang out with my friends. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me kind of sort of react to this movie. I was gonna do a full reaction video, but that takes a lot of work and I did not have the space on my computer or my camera to do that. So I tried to do the best that I could. I hope that you guys enjoyed it at least, but for what it was. Anyhow, I'm gonna go now. It's like 1 a.m. and I wanna tell you guys that, and this is kind of going off topic, but I plan to do this for you guys anyway, just not in this way but I want to tell you guys that I appreciate y'all so much like I know that sometimes it's hard to envision people behind these screens but just know that when you watch our videos any creator content creator on any form or platform whatever we're real people and I don't know everyone else everyone's motivation for what they do but I know for me when I started my channel my motivation was just to connect with people and to talk about books but now that I've been here for almost a year it's grown even deeper than that yes I'm still here to connect with you about books but I'm here to just connect with you and when you guys leave comments and you guys hit me up on Instagram and Twitter and we talk and you come to live streams you guys always tell us how happy it makes you but I don't think you guys realize at least for me how happy it makes me because just like you guys I'm also going through this entire pandemic I'm I don't go anywhere I don't I haven't seen my best friend who lives up the street in months but I want to sincerely thank you guys for being there because without you guys this channel doesn't exist and so I'm grateful to you and I want y'all to know that it's not a one-sided thing I'm equally as happy and as grateful for you guys as you are for me and for all the other content creators out there or whoever you look up to. And I'm gonna end this video by saying that I love you guys. I appreciate you guys always and forever. Bye y'all. I'm thinking of you.